Welcome to another episode of Cheap and Cheerful. This week I'm talking about Sunset again, as I promised I would in the latest Kickstarter report card of the same game, this time focusing more on the actual game itself. If you're interested in some of the gory details surrounding their Kickstarter campaign, I'm sure there is a link on the screen and in the description right about now. Well, the link is always in the description, but you know what I mean. For those that don't know, Sunset is a mechanically minimalistic narrative game set sometime in the 70s in a fictional South American country. You play a recently graduated American engineering student who becomes trapped in this fictional country due to a sudden civil war and uprising. To make ends meet, you take a job as a housekeeper, where once a week for one hour before sunset, you take care of one Mr. Ortega's home. On each visit to the empty apartment, you are given a list of tasks, which you are being asked to complete. You actually do not have to complete these tasks, whether you run out of time or just choose to not do them. And there are many other things to do during your time there. The main mechanic of the game comes up any time you go to do something. For most tasks, you can choose to complete it in a warm or a cool manner. For example, you can choose to take a box of awards that you find in the office and set them up in a nice display, or you can just pack the box up and set it on the shelf. Either one completes the task, but how you choose to complete each task will affect your relationship with Mr. Ortega. It's this relationship that really forms the main plot of the game. You do learn a lot about the civil war going on and even interact with it in some limited ways throughout. But it's how this relationship grows and changes throughout and how the character you play and the character of Mr. Ortega changes. That is the real narrative here. Enjoyment of such a mechanically simple game is going to be very divided. On the one hand, I found returning to the same slowly evolving scene sort of relaxing. I learned where everything was, and I kind of enjoyed getting to know every nook and cranny and finding the small little secrets and hidden things and such throughout. On the other hand, I absolutely can find some people becoming bored if they're not engaged by the story and interested in the world around. Visually, it's kind of strange. At some times, it's striking and works very well and plays well with light and the changing of the light during the sunset and is sometimes beautiful. It's definitely simplified, almost minimalistic, and at times that plays against it. When it gets dim or you go into a room with the lights off, there's this sort of hazy filter that's over the top and it can make everything seem kind of flat. Even in some daylight situations, the lighting just comes off as a little flat. I suspect this is an artistic choice and that if you were to look into the lighting sources, for the most part, the apartment is going to be lit very realistically, with the only light sources being the ambient light through the windows and from any lights you turn on. Problem is, like I said, it only works some of the time. And the choice to not use any light enhancement throughout kind of points at where I think the biggest flaw with this title is. If you've watched my Kickstarter report card on this, you probably know where this is going though. I will say there is lots of good music in this game, which is helpful because there isn't a ton of voiceover. At the beginning of most days you get some voiceover from your character, and occasionally when you do something or spot something through the apartment you'll get a little bit. But a lot of information is also delivered simply through text and reading. So having some background music that changes every time you're in the apartment is nice. And it all ties in nicely with the Latin American setting and the 70s time period. Speaking of the 70s time period, I think maybe part of the problem with this game's sales is it was a little too authentic to the time and went right over the heads of the target audience. I know I probably missed a lot of the subtler references made with the choice of collectible book covers and albums that are spread throughout the apartment. They are in no way critical to understanding the story or the plot, but I feel like it would have deepened the experience to know why that specific book or music was playing. In some cases, it can be inferred from the title, but in a lot of the cases, I think knowing a little bit about the content of the book would be helpful. And I'm sure they're all mostly relatively famous, at least if you run in the right circles. As I alluded to earlier, I feel like most of these failures all stem from one place. 
and that is the developer's Tale of Tales. You see, they're not a real traditional game development studio. Most, if not all, of their prior projects were short experiences with very few or no game mechanics. And I think they kind of approached Sunset with a similar outlook and a very specific vision for what it would look like and what it would feel like. Then, throughout the development process, they were very true to that vision, which is admirable, but it caused sacrifices to gameplay and mechanics. I really feel like if they had brought on a veteran with experience developing more mainstream games, just even to provide guidance or counseling, it could have led to some small improvements that would have really helped its commercial success and helped it with mainstream gaming audiences. Regardless of what could or should have been, we still need to judge its value based on what it is now. Personally, I feel like the game is a little long. It drags on a few more cycles than it should, and it ends up just kind of strolling across the finish line. Opinions on whether it is actually worth playing are going to be very split, I think. They're going to stand pretty strongly on one side or the other, but the decision is going to be fairly personal, I think. As in, I personally enjoyed it. It wasn't the best thing I've ever played, it wasn't groundbreaking or life-changing in any way. I did find it strangely satisfying to come back to the same place and do similar things and, and slowly push that plot forward. But for others, the burn is going to be too slow, the plot too thin, and the time just too long. And I understand that. And this is not a game that I would ever tell people that they just have to play regardless of what they think their opinion is going in. I don't think the game is really going to change your opinion much from your first impressions, from what you're hearing and seeing here or other outlets. So really my guidance on this is go with your gut feeling and wait for a sale. The current full retail price right now seems a bit excessive for what you're getting and the level of polish and quality. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for Sunset. If you're interested in a little more about the Kickstarter and some of the extracurriculars that happened afterwards, check out my Kickstarter report card on this same game. Otherwise, thanks for watching. For those new to Cheap and Cheerful, be sure to check out our review philosophy here, or get to know me as a reviewer here. If you've already played this game, take a look over here for more recommendations. Have a great day.